Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. I would like to talk about brushes in this particular tutorial, particularly the mixer brush and why to use it. The idea here is I want to create more dynamic waves with a wave brush. Now, in the past, we've been utilizing the stamp tool. Well, the stamp tool is not technically a brush. If I go ahead and hit the, the S key, make the brush pretty small, or right about this size here. And I'm gonna go over here, option, and click on this small wave. Now what a brush does is that whatever properties that I, that I capture, it will resize that image within here. Now look right inside, you can see the image of the other wave. And what's, what you're gonna see happening is as I make the brush bigger, the wave doesn't get bigger, it's actually extending the area that it's gonna clone on the canvas. Now if we make a, a, a brush a standard brush from any of this information, it's going to use black and white information or values to actually create a standard brush. So as I start to paint, once again, it's just extending the area that is actually cloning off the canvas. It's not really creating a brush. Now our goal here is to create a wave brush. So in other words, I want the ability to select the color and the luminance properties from this image or from, from some other image to put back in to this one to actually create some pretty dynamic waves, okay? So, and we're gonna do that via the mixer brush. Now, this is gonna be a pretty interesting technique, so let's go and have some fun. I'm gonna utilize this image to actually create my wave brush from. Now, normally when we work with the, the mixer brush, it's used more as a painting, a painting tool or a way to create painterly images, but very few actually create, use it to create a actual brush from color properties. So taking a look at this, let's go ahead and actually create the initial shape that I want from this photographic image. I'm gonna go over here to the channels and you can see that I've already created a channel. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it from scratch so that you, you guys can see exactly how I accomplished it. So I'm looking at the tonal value information to find out which one of these channels will actually separate these waves from everything else. And in this case, I believe it's gonna be the red channel. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start separating the medium gray values all around our brush from the background. So image, let's go ahead and apply a layer blend mode to this image to itself. And I'm going to choose, instead of a screen blend mode, let's try a multiply there. That's bringing the other values down around here. And I'm gonna do it again after I clicked okay. Image, apply image once again, it's bringing it down. I'm, it, it's multiply, but I'm gonna try and overlay and see what it looks like, there we go. Now we're getting a nice bright value for the waves. We're maintaining it. Once again, image, apply image, because I'm thinking I can take these down a little darker all around, and is using overlay again, but what do we use just multiply? That works great, because it keeps detail in the waves, and, is, and at the same time, it brings down the value everywhere else. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the B key for my standard brush tool. I'm gonna make sure the standard brush tool is targeted here. Bring it in a little closer. And I'm going to change the layer blend mode for that brush to overlay. That means if I paint with black, only the darker areas will be affected. It's gonna ignore all the white areas. Okay, so I'm gonna just paint around it. There it is. Bring it back so I can see everything. And everything is pretty dark and it's ignoring the whites. Okay, so I'm going to take it to normal so that I can paint normally with black just to get rid of everything else here that I don't need. Making the brush a little smaller. All I'm doing is just editing this so that just so I can get just the waves and that's it there. All right, I'm going to come back out around. Make sure all these little speckles are taken out around the extremities. There it is, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is utilize this as a selection. So, command or control click on it to get the marching ants. Go highlight my RGB composite, go back to my layer, command J, and place the water 
right up here onto its own layer. Now to help you see better what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and fill that with medium gray, which is a nice little neutral matte to see what I've actually done there. Okay, so once I have this, I'm going to create a brush from it, which is going to help me. So let's go ahead and target this. Go to my mixer brush, target this layer. I'm going to make it large to pretty much surround the initial shape. And then right up here in my options bar, here's, here's a, an important key. I want to make sure that the wet is zero. I want to make sure that the load is 100% and the flow is 100%. Okay, so I'm utilizing the, the dry heavy load, which gives you that by default. But also make sure over here that we have load brush targeted. So that when I come here and surround this particular shape, hold the Alt or Option key and click on it, you can see right here it loaded this image right into the brush. Now once that's been, been applied, I'm gonna come right over here to my tool preset and I'm going to save that as a brand new tool. So I'm gonna call this one, how about I'm gonna put a, put ZZZ just so I know where it's gonna go and wave brush zero zero one I put ZZZ because it's gonna pop to the bottom so I can always find it include the color alright so and there it is at the very bottom now I have it targeted that means if I go over to my beach scene with this brush I'm painting in a brand new layer, I can actually stamp it there, okay? Now take a look at this. All the color, all the luminous property is all there. And guess what? I can make the brush smaller and it maintains the exact same shape. Okay, so it's not cloning. I've actually created a brush from this. So this is gonna be really, really handy. I wanna make dynamic waves. So that's before and after, before and after. And if I want the waves to get even bigger, I'll make, make, make sure that it doesn't look so obvious that it's the same one. I'm making it much larger and just tap and release. And there's even bigger waves coming across. So that's a nice little technique in adding waves. You're capturing a brush with all the full color image or the full color properties of the image from the image and the luminous values are all there so you're not using black and white images or black and white information to create the brush all right so hopefully this has been helpful this is stephen burns more tutorials to come enjoy